We're back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course. And look who we have here. It is none other than Sam Mayer, who will make his Xfinity Series debut next week at Pocono. How's it going, buddy? Uh, it's going pretty darn well over here. <laughs> okay, so you are in if you are in your Charlotte apartment. So for people that may not know, you made the move a couple weeks ago down to uh, the hubbub, which is of course Charlotte, North Carolina. You're in an apartment all by yourself. How is it going? Uh, it's going good so far. Uh, I'm not home as much as I thought I would be. I'm constantly out doing some business stuff and meetings and all the fun stuff that comes with NASCAR, like working out. So, I mean, I'm not home too much unless I'm sleeping, but I mean, it's, uh, it's going good so far. I'm definitely working my butt off. You are, you are, you, you've been a pretty busy guy this, uh, uh, this season. And of course, you know, this deal is, this deal has been talked about for so long um, since September when it got announced. Now that day is finally, is finally coming. It's literally next week when you turn 18. Have you thought about it? Are you nervous? What are you, what are you feeling heading into next week? Oh man, I don't know. It's, 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 a, it's a weird feeling of like, kind of jealousy that I haven't been in it yet until now um but it's also kind of like a feeling of like gratitude that I'm getting the opportunity to do it because like a couple years ago I would I wouldn't have thought I would have gotten to this point this quickly and uh I mean I'm grateful for the opportunity that my dad and junior motorsports and all the other great people that surrounded me uh have given me this opportunity uh to do this so I mean I'm grateful for that but I mean I'm itching to go I I, I I'm grateful and I need, I need to use the opportunity now while it's here. So I'm itching to go. I can't wait for Pocono to get here next week. And uh, I'm just looking forward to it. You said on Twitter that you have something to prove to a lot of people because, you know, obviously everyone has seen the success that Ty has had this year and, and everybody else, you know, junior motorsports had a lot of success, of course, with Al Geyer and of course, Josh Berry winning at Martinsville. So it, how, because we got some good tracks for you coming up because tracks, you've never been to of course you've been to new hampshire in a k&n car you've never been to atlanta you've been to road america several times you've been to pocono in an arca car you're coming up to tracks where you do have experience at and then there's the tracks where you don't and some of them most of them you don't have practice in qualifying how are you going to manage all that um i don't know (laughs) (laughs) i mean it's just a fact of going out there and feeling it out i mean especially for pocono the, the Arca race is definitely going to help me get used to the racetrack itself, but nothing can prepare you for what the Xfinity car is. Like, I mean, Kyle Busch said it himself, the Xfinity cars are the hardest cars to drive right now uh, in the top three national series, at least. And well, I'm going to be driving that with no practice or qualifying or anything like that. And I'm just going to be going green flag racing. So, I mean, it's going to be pretty weird. Uh, but I mean, Josh Berry, he's a short track driver like me. He's been doing it for the last couple of years and he showed up and started doing all this Xfinity stuff with no practice and qualifying and he did just fine. And he actually won a race. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's the fact that I think if he can do it, I, I can compete as well. Uh, Cause obviously we have the same car and same crew chief and same team, same amazing team uh, at that uh, behind us and pushing us to do our best. I mean, all of Drew Motorsports is definitely doing really well right now. I mean, our mother Hendrick Motorsports is doing even better. Uh, so, I mean, if they're doing well, we're going to do just as great. And uh, I'm excited for what's to come. Of course. It's, uh, it's been a good year so far for Junior Motorsports, Hendrick Motorsports, and the, sh- and, uh, and the Bowtie Brigade as a whole. So, um, okay. So you mentioned that you're also running the ARCA race at Pocono, and you're also going to be running a few other ARCA races. I think Kansas Milwaukee, I think Michigan is on there. Is there any more? Arca race wise, I think that could be it. I mean, I think we're doing Bristol and the Glen, maybe outside of that. But um, uh, yeah, we're we're not doing too much Arca racing, which is weird because I haven't done any yet this year. We were supposed to do Mid Ohio, yeah. um, but obviously we weren't able to do that unfortunately because some circumstances came up. But uh yeah i mean i'm looking forward to those arca races because i want to give ty gibbs a run for his money at a couple of these racetracks um, a lot of people would yeah exactly i mean he's uh he's kind of sticking out the show a little bit over there so i kind of want to show him what it, what he really has to do to win but yeah i mean especially so. in the Xfinity stuff too i mean he's out here and winning two races already or something and i feel like i can do the exact same thing i mean i beat him 
in both championships in the ARCA last year. So I think if it comes down to just a 1v1 versus me and him, I think I think I can end up winning over him, even though he has kind of the experience on me. Always good to see you and Ty back on the racetrack together. We haven't seen you two back on there, I think, since uh, I think since Phoenix in the Arca West race last year. So be good yeah. to see you two together. You're also running a handful of truck races too, I think. Yeah, we're uh, we're doing the triple header at Bristol. We're doing the Arca race, the truck race, and the Xfinity race. So I'm excited to announce that here uh, that we're doing that because I think um, I think that it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, I know I know I can win an Arca race there because I did it. I know I can win a truck race there because I've done it. It's a matter of that Xfinity race, if I can put it together or not. But, I mean, they're the hardest cars to drive, like Kyle Busch said. And, I mean, it's, it's a matter of going out and doing it. And, I mean, it's a short track, so aerodynamics doesn't mean too much. It's just a matter of going out and driving it. So, uh, I'm excited for that. We're doing those races. And then we're doing the triple header at the Glen as well. We're doing three there as well. So, that's going to be that's gonna be something crazy to go for. But, um, yeah, we're doing a – we're doing a couple truck races here and there just to stay in the, stay in the seat even more because uh, I really haven't raced too much this year. I've only got like seven or eight races under my belt so far. So it's a matter of just getting that seat time when the, when the time comes. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, that was, uh, that was a lot of jam pack there. Uh, got some announcements there, bud. There you go. Yeah, I mean, it's the fact that like a lot of people probably know it already because they can look at my schedule. But now that I'm actually saying it to people is uh, – it definitely opens their eyes like, wow, you're doing a lot of racing. I think so before my birthday, we're doing, um, I think it's uh, 12 races before my birthday. And then after my birthday, we're doing like 30. <laughs> so it's like, it's going from nothing to all extreme in one month. So it's, gonna, it's definitely going to be fun. Racers want to be in the race car. And that's basically that. Okay. I figure I feel like I have to make this more interesting every time I talk to you because you never know where where these conversations go. Well, also because I've known you for so long, uh, I always want to ask you this: How are you in like regular traffic? Are you are you considered a good driver like in an actual car? I would like to think so. Yes, um, I definitely drive as safe as I can because I get all the speed out on the racetrack and I tend to go the speed limit on the road, but. If I'm running late, I'll definitely push the speed limit, maybe by a mile an hour or two, uh, trying to get everything I can get. But uh, I'm I'm really calm. Um, if people cut me off, I get a little upset because because I my, in my mind I go, oh, he just blocked me on the racetrack. That that's where my mind goes. So I I don't know. I get a little bit upset there, but it doesn't everybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, will Aaron Rodgers leave the Green Bay Packers? Is he really? I didn't hear I anything. Know. I don't know. I'm asking you. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I'm giving you your thoughts. I, I, I'm, I'm asking you. Yeah, I mean, with what I've heard uh, in the sports industry anyway, like I feel like he's going to leave only if he's going to go and do like what Tom Brady did last yeah. year and go for the Buccaneers. Oh, yeah. He's, gonna, he's, he's the kind of person that he's competitive. He wants to be the best, obviously. Most people do, but he he kind of has that mindset where if someone else does it and he knows he can beat them, he's going to go out and do the same thing and try to prove him wrong. So I think he's going to end up maybe doing a one-year deal or two-year deal with some other team, possibly, uh, trying to go win a Super Bowl over there, something like that. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I It'll be really interesting to see when the silly season for those guys come out. Um, how do you think the Browns are going to do? I think they're going to make the playoffs again, and I think they're going to choke in the Super Bowl. I think I think they're going to make it all the way to the Super Bowl and choke, like the baby steps. Last two, three years ago or so, we were zero and thirteen or zero and sixteen, and last or two years ago we were like three and thirteen or something like that, something stupid. And then last year we made the playoffs. Uh, I baby steps, like let's make the playoffs again, get our confidence back up, and let's go win a Super Bowl next year. You became a Browns fan at the right time. Um, if you ask the little people like Matt Tift or uh, Matt Humphrey, they'll tell you about all the pain that they went through over the years. Oh yeah, like I've been a I've been a Browns fan for probably four or five years now. Eh, well, yeah, probably five five years. Yeah. So it, it's been a little painful at first, and I, I was like, underdogs, they're gonna come back eventually. It ebbs and flows, and everything like that, and it's starting to work. I knew it. I knew that Baker would do it. <laughs> yep. You, yeah, you don't. It's a good thing you don't remember all those like Cleveland stuff that they had that happened for like the drive, the fumble, and all those other things that happened going through like other. It's a, it's yeah, a couple of years ago that was probably yeah, the, the, the game. game for those guys. 
no, there's that. That was much worse because you know that basically the the town was cursed and everybody was like, yeah. Okay, so if you win all three Bristol races, uh, are you going to convince the Orange Code to give you more stuff? He better. I mean, even if I just win the Arca race, I think he better. Like the fact that I would go out and win a truck race and then the arc race after that, and he didn't give me anything for that race. I was pretty mad about that, <laughs> but he, he gave me the Toledo sleeve. So I guess I can't, I can't be too much of a beggar, but honestly, yeah. I think we got to put a deal together. I win all three. He's got to give me like a hundred dollars of like spicy nugs or something like that. <laughs> do- spicy nugs. Well, he still, well, he still always tells me that I owe you something. So I, I don't know. You probably owe me like 10 bucks somewhere here. Yes, and there. Yeah, you, I, yeah, you I, can I, make I, up. Literally, I probably do. It's, uh, you know, from, from deal there, deal there. I don't know. <laughs> so maybe, maybe, maybe not. I'm, I don't know. I might have to go. I might, I might be at Bristol this year. So well, maybe, All right, then we got to put a deal together there too. Got to put a deal together, you know. Um, okay, so out of all the tracks that you're that are on your schedule, what what track are you most looking forward to? Yeah, I think it just asked a dumb question. Ooh, I mean, obviously, I'm a little bit biased in Bristol, baby, but um, I don't know. It, I, I kind of, I'm for some reason, I'm really looking forward to Phoenix this year. Yeah. Purely because we've had the worst luck there. And I really want to turn that around. I really want to make it so we go out and win an Xfinity race there. Because I haven't won a race there yet, but I have a second. I have um, yeah. a third place run going before we blew up. Yep. Another second place run or first place possibly run Remember before that. we got put in the wall and got a tire going down. I've been there like three times already and we've DNF twice. So it's, it's really unfortunate. Um, but, but I'm really looking forward to that race purely because I want to turn my luck around there. Is your fridge full of Uncrustables? I'm not going to answer that question because I don't want to get yelled at by my trainer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Josh Wise would not be happy with you. Correct. Um, so let's see. Um, has your opinion changed on dirt racing? Nope. Still sucks. Um, okay. Well, maybe that, well, your PR guy is going to convince you to, to change your mind on that because your PR. Eventually, guy- probably in the next couple of years, I'll have to run it there at Bristol or some other. T- I'll say this. Okay. No dirt at Bristol, dirt somewhere else. Don't take a good yes, short yes, track yes, yes. and make it something worse. Take yeah. a dirt track and put it on the schedule. Yes. I think it just makes sense. Like, why would you take, everyone begs for short tracks and stuff, and then you take away a short track and make it a dirt track. It just doesn't make sense to me. They, I think they're the, the, the short tracks that they want is like, you know, Nashville Fairgrounds and Slinger and all exactly. that. Exactly. Uh, like they, they, we want real like grassroots stuff. We don't want not good dirt racing at Bristol. <laughs> Like, I, I didn't think the racing was that good. Like, I don't know what people thought it was so cool and loved about it. I, I gave it a big old thumbs down. Yeah. Well, the thing is, once you run and you win there, you're going to change your mind and stuff. That's what happens. Because That's, Joey Logano is the exact same way, and I'm scared that it's going to end up being me. But I, deep down, I'm an asphalt racer. I'm a road racer. I do not get along with dirt at all. So I might be a little more biased than uh, anybody else. Yeah. Casey Heschel, you have a lot of work to do to change him. So, yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. One, a couple other things. Have you convinced Sam Mayer fan to be a Browns fan? No, I don't. Honestly, I don't know. That's a good question. Probably not. I think no matter what happens, no one's going to become a Browns fan at this point because they'll get called for being on the bandwagon, like when the Browns win the Super Bowl or something like that this year. Um, or they're going to just start sucking again really bad. So it's kind of a lose-lose scenario. But here's the thing. Would people call you a bandwagoner because you've only been a – because you're from Wisconsin. You're Because everyone from Wisconsin is supposed to be like a Packers fan. And then and then you jumped on – and we know the story. If you go back to my podcast interview I did with Sam back in March, and he had kind of explains how he – becomes a Browns fan but you know people would, are you afraid to call yourself a bandwagoner because you've only been a fan for four years I mean I became a fan when they went like the year <laughs> the year that I became a fan they went 0 and 16 so it's hard to say that I'm on it because of the success they've had um but yeah, I mean being a Browns fan for only less than half a decade or half a decade um yeah I mean it, it's definitely kind of borderline but 
No, I, I, I'm a true Browns fan because of the players, and I don't like it because of the name or anything else. Yeah. Um, how was the – and final question, how was the Indy 500? Wow, it was so good. It was probably one of the best races at the Brickyard I've ever watched. Like, yeah. any NASCAR race there, it's the same thing as the Indy race there, just the Indy cars were way faster. So, it, 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 no matter how you look at it, the Indy 500 this year was the best Indy 500 I've ever watched. Oh, yeah. And I've probably only watched like four, granted. <laughs> but still, it was such, it was a really good race. Usually I won't watch IndyCar. I can't stand it, but this was actually a really good race and I wanted to stay for every lap. So you went karting with like, uh, you know, David Malukas and Simon Sykes and all that. Yeah, I mean, back in the day. Yeah, you went karting with a lot of the, got of the guys who are in like Road to Indy and stuff. Oh yeah, like there's so many drivers that I I've raced against and beat back in the go kart days that are now on their way to IndyCar, which is crazy to think about. Yeah, that, that's amazing. Uh, all right, well Sam, I know you got probably um, that bunch of things to do, and including making a Culver stop. But so we'll, uh, yes, I had to I had to get that in there. Um, well, uh, good luck next week at Pocono, and uh, let's uh, let's go for two, buddy. Sounds good to me. Appreciate it.